So today I'm going to be doing a review of this Haim here. And now this is the second model I've reviewed from the brand. The first was a chronograph, which I'll have linked down below, and that one I purchased myself. Whereas this one, Haim actually reached out and asked if I wanted to do a first look, kind of first review on this model, just because this technically releases today. So I said yes, just to specify, Haim didn't say in any way, shape, or form what had to be said in the video, and they don't have to review it at all. So all these opinions are my own. Take that for what you will, and let's take a look at this watch. So we have a diameter of about 37.9, lug to lug of 44.3, height of 10.8, and a lug width of 20 millimeters. Some of the general specifications for this watch, we're gonna have beating away in here, the what they call the HMC1 caliber, which is based off the ETA 2824 architecture. This is, although customized a little bit by Haim, as well as assembled in the US, which is kind of cool. We have this beautiful cut rotor, as well as some blasted finishing on the uh, plates and the blued screws as well, which is kind of nice to see. We have 50 meters of state of water resistance with just a regular push-pull crown. We do have a sapphire crystal on the front with five layers of anti-reflective coating doesn't mention whether it's on the front or the inside but uh, it's there the case itself is actually full titanium i believe it's grade 2 titanium because the uh, designation for it which you can see right here is titanium ta2 so it's not going to be as scratch resistant as grade 5 or anything like that but interesting to see at this price point as a note the watch itself as well as the movement like i mentioned earlier are all hand assembled in the u.s uh, the finishing on the case is supposedly done by hand as well which is cool uh, the watch itself retails for $1,350, and I believe it's $100 premium for a, a, the Venturing dial version. And lastly, the watch is limited to 50 pieces per dial. So starting out with the dial here, and this is probably one of the best parts about this watch, and to be fair, best part about Haim so far in my experience. Uh, they do tend to do very nice dials, and this is no different. We can see here, just like the chronograph I looked at previously, we have these beautiful brigade numerals, which are done very nicely, beautiful reflection off them, beautiful shape to them. They catch the light very well, and they just look premium. A lot of brands, like I've looked at, let's say Fears or Ophion or some of these other ones that use these nice metal applied brigade numerals, they can be fairly flat, and they just don't grab the light very well, whereas Haim actually grabs very nicely, really reflective, and it doesn't look really boring at any angle, except, you know, Sometimes the camera angle makes it look a lot more boring than it is in person. But yeah, it's more similar to kind of like this on day-to-day -day usage. We do have a very thin sword style handset here, which is bifaceted, which I think looks really good. Very classic, kind of a nice blend between sporty and dressy. You see we have a lot of really just things going on on the dial, a lot of dimensionality, a lot of applied metal pieces. We have a guilloche in the center, uh, which is a very beautifully done pattern. It actually looks really nice, and we'll zoom in on that a little, little bit. Then we have this metal ring, which separates the guilloche from the brushed hours track, and I think it looks pretty great. It's a little bit of a step up, a little bit of a different tier, uh, and then steps back down to the brushed hours track, like I mentioned, which is done in this very beautiful blue tone. So you get this nice color play depending on the angle course the applied metal indices and then something I really didn't notice at first but on the very outboard we have a metal applied seconds track it's something you definitely don't see done very often and it's just a nice little touch there you also see underboard that seconds track you have a little bit of that guilloche continuing which is a really cool touch very little text on the dial we have Haim here at 12 Chicago Illinois at the very bottom six o'clock and really that's it for the dial of course the date at three and as a note the date will be uh, changed later in production to be color matched so here we have a white date window later we will have a blue one so just keep that in mind but overall very beautiful dial nicely done really clean and i don't really have many complaints zooming in here on this very nice dial and this is where i'll say again this is a prototype so just keep that in mind i have had experience with Haim in the past and they did have very good qc so i don't doubt that'll be the case for the final production versions and also as a note being changed later these brigade numerals will have a little bit more height to them so very welcome change they're not bad as they are but more is never bad. So taking a quick look here at this just central guilloche pattern, it's not a kind of traditional pattern that I'm used to seeing. It has a little bit more bulbousness to it. It has a little bit more of this almost triangular scale type shape to it, almost like water that's flowing in a sense. So it's a pretty pattern. I do enjoy it. The guilloche itself does have a lot of depth, both uh, color wise as well as visually, because depending on the angle, it can just seem like almost a little bit of a different pattern or a living pattern, I guess more accurately. It changes with very tiny little movements of the eye or the wrist.
You can see Hain is integrated, I think, fairly well into the guilloche pattern. I'm glad they didn't print right on top of it and very finely. I think it, it stands out enough but doesn't look cheaply done. The outboard metal ring that separates the two sections here, done very nicely, has a really bulbous look to it, which I enjoy. It has a nice shape. And then the numerals, again, done well, beautiful shape, really nice light play. Uh, not too badly done QC-wise. Of course, there's little marks here and there, but again, this is a uh, preview pre-production version. Something I will focus on, and I do think this is probably something that is utilized the best on this watch, is the brushed hours track. And th there's just so much depth to it, there's so much beauty, there's so much light play. And this was my feeling on the chronograph version, that used all brushed surfaces, and I think it came together amazingly well. I almost do miss it here in the place of the guilloche. Not to say the guilloche is badly done, it is just something where I do think the brushing adds a lot of life to it. So maybe in the future I would like a potentially all brushed dial version, maybe in different colors, but uh, it's something I would like to see. Looking outboard towards that metal seconds track, and it is done really well. The, again, the metal doesn't look cheaply done. It has this nice three-dimensional quality, this nice thickness, this nice roundedness to it all. It doesn't look sharp or cheap. Again, you can see that guilloche pattern continuing a little bit underboard that. Looking at the handset, pretty, you know, shoddily done QC-wise, but again, this is a review version. I do think the shape is done very beautifully. The polishing is actually pretty well done. You can even see the underside of that seconds hand. It's nice to see the handset itself doesn't have a lot of fuzziness along the output. Board. It's just pretty nicely finished. So overall, I do think Haim has another really good dial, and as long as they up the QC on the standard versions and again add those little quality of life improvements, I think this will be a looker. So taking a look in natural light, we can see, of course, the numerals are popping amazingly well. The dial itself takes on a pretty uniform dark bluish tone. There isn't a lot of sunburst at play, but there is a little bit at subtle angles. Uh, the guilloche does change a little bit depending on what extremity you're looking at it from. In more natural sunlight, we can see the watch becomes a little less saturated. The colors become a little bit grayer and more muted. The sunburst section pops a little bit more, so you see that bow tie effect much more prominently. The guilloche center becomes a little bit gray or a little dustier in a sense, but also it's still very defined, still very readable. So it doesn't look bad in sunlight, but just very much two different watches depending on the lighting situation. Now moving on to the case of this watch, and this is very similar to that chronograph case, just a quote unquote like logical evolution. They kept the main shape of it. They did add this kind of like pseudo fluted bezel to it. I forget what they call it. It is almost very much more coin edge like, and it's actually done really well. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about it in person, but it has this very interesting effect where you have a little bit of sloping to the bezel, and then you come to the edge, which also slopes down, but is done in this coin-edged pattern. And it just is visually different and unique and cool. It catches the light very well, is something different, there's trying something different, and I think it's executed well here. The kind of tiny little grooves as well, in my opinion, play a little bit off that guilloche dial. It adds that interesting finish that not only is contained to the dial, but extends to the case, which is really cool. The case itself is relatively simple uh, in finish. There is mainly high polish from the top side. There is brushing from the sides uh, that is done vertically. And then we have high polish all everywhere on the lugs and the hollowed out lugs, which is kind of interesting. We of course have the case shape that is supposed to be a interpretation of the Corn de Vache styling with those very nice uh, defined lugs, which are, have a little bit more roundedness or a little bit more like a horn shape to it. These, I do think, again, need to be a little bit more defined in terms of their shape. They're a little bit plain to me. There's a little bit of a gap in between where the kind of case starts and the lug starts that I think can be, if not utilized better, brought into the design more. Because again, I do think if maybe these lugs were more rounded or just the shape was reworked, uh, that wouldn't look as, uh, I guess, out of place to me. It, it looks almost like it's built for something else or the case itself is just plopped into a lug thing to make it almost as a interchangeable styling in a sense, but that's not the case. This is a pretty customized watch uh, design-wise, so I do think the lugs need to integrate just a tiny bit better. For an automatic watch though, this is a pretty thin. It does wear well. The, there is not a lot of thickness in the case body itself. We're only talking about a little over 10 millimeters. Uh, the case back and the lugs kind of conform in a way to the wrist, which it just wears comfortably. It doesn't have any problems sliding under a dress cuff. The titanium isn't heavy, so it feels comfortable on, and it is pleasurable to wear. We do have Haim Watch Co. subtly signed in the crown there. On the case back, we have a little bit more of that traditional kind of gun metal -y, uh, unfinished titanium treatment, which honestly I would have kind of liked for more of the watch, but I do understand adding some brushing and some uh, 
elegance to what is supposed to be more an elegant watch, not a sports watch necessarily. Some general text on the outboard, and to me, a very pretty finished movement. Uh, we do again have the striping on the rotor. We have this little bit of fluting along the outside, which matches perfectly with the bezel as well, which I like. It's a nice uh, continuation of design something that they definitely didn't need to do and while maybe extraneous a little bit. That's what watches are about, right? And again, I think it's just a relatively nice movement to look at. You have the gray background that is a nice monotone base for the gold to pop out of. The gray really ties in well with the titanium gray dull uh, gunmetal type finish. A little bit of gold in those cogs there. And then supposedly the balance uh, bridge here will later be uh, gold plated as well. And right before we move on to how this wears, just like the previous Hame that I looked at, this uh, watch strap is made specifically for this watch from Deluxe. You can even see on the back, Deluxe for Hame. Very good quality strap. You got the quick release bars. You have the light blue accented stitching, which ties in very well with the whole watch. This is, again, I'll say it like I did in the last review, one of the few watches that comes on a strap that's worthy of the watch. This is a very nice strap. I would not mind this strap on any other watch in my collection. This is not a throwaway strap and something that is much more than serviceable. It's very nice as a package. So moving on to how this watch wears, earlier I was wearing this from Castle and Gazelle, which is kind of a weird name, but a very cool watch. So this review is coming soon. And here we have the Hame sitting on my six and a half inch wrist. And you can see it wears amazingly. It isn't too large in terms of diameter. It's not too long in terms of lug to lug. Uh, the watch case sits fairly flat on the wrist and I think it just is a cool presence. It does have a kind of feel on the wrist that is not common to many watches nowadays. When I put this on the wrist, I even like the little lug gap between the case and the lugs a little bit more. It just makes the watch feel a little bit more defined. It gives a different visual appearance than most other watches on wrist because usually you have a very integrated lug appearance like you did on this watch. It's kind of built into the case or you just have something that's soldered on but just still looks very integrated. With this you almost have things to quote unquote feast the eyes on. You have the lugs that draw your attention in, then it goes from the lugs to this bezel which is very interesting, to the dial. It just is something that you can look at and enjoy. Looking at the side view there, again the watch pretty much sits flat into the wrist uh, and I think looks pretty nice. I enjoy how it wears on the wrist. You have a very dynamic dial as well different blue tones coming out of the guilloche versus the brushed uh, portions of the dial versus the metal applied indices. It just is pretty good looking and has a lot of life to it. I will say, although it's lighter because it's titanium, it doesn't feel too light or like a toy or anything. In my experience, titanium watches only feel odd usually because they have titanium bracelets with it and you expect the bracelet to have more heft. So that's not a problem here. Moving on some other straps. The first one I have here is from Jean Rousseau in collaboration with Theo and Harris done this cork styling. I like it. I think it plays well with the blue tones. It's kind of light brown, makes the watch pop a little bit more. Uh, and I just enjoy the kind of fun that it brings to the watch. Looks pretty good in my opinion. A little hint of red there, depending on how the you know end of the strap fits you. And yeah, just a cool, fun combo. Not too serious and adds a little bit of a pop of color. Adding even more color to this watch is this very interesting, I believe they call it the Maya strap from Has No Bounds in this very kind of dusty rosish pink color plays really well off the blue, adds a little bit more fun and vibrance to the watch, and kind of makes it a little bit less dressy. There we have it. Works pretty well with all the tones. I think it's pretty fun. Not for everybody, I don't think, but uh, you know, if you don't like this exact color, I think this more casual, almost distressed type leather works pretty well with the watch in general, so you can go for any color you like. This is a combo I really like, also from Has No Bounds. This very interesting, almost prismatic type strap. Um, I forget what it's exactly called, but I'll have it linked down below. Works really well with the tones of the watch, in my opinion, but also almost just makes it feel more vintage leaning because it has an almost aged quality, but not aged badly, aged, you know, I guess gracefully. Uh, and I think it just really plays off the feeling of the watch and looks good on the wrist. Adds a little bit of light plain texture that otherwise wouldn't be there. Uh, kind of complements but doesn't blend into the watch like a blue strap does. Plays off the numerals a little bit, so I think this is a really cool combo. And lastly, of course, the white Archer silicone strap. Just to note, these do kind of yellow over time, so like this is a strap habit white strap, and you can kind of see the difference. The only reason I don't use this one is it is quite a bit thicker and doesn't really work with dressier watches, so 
here's the Archer. Very comfortable, really good fit, really plays well off those uh, blue tones and the white tones you kind of get from the metal applied indices. If I move the watch up a little bit higher, I have closer to a six inch wrist here as well, and the watch still fits perfectly fine. So this is just a really nice wearing case and pretty comfortable on wrist. So pros and cons of this Haim, and to me, one of the bigger pros is of course the size. It's nice to see more sub 40 millimeter watches. The lug to lug is very constrained. The thickness is actually very nice for an automatic watch nonetheless. So all around proportionality and wearability, it's very nice in person. On to the kind of biggest pro, I do think just the dial and the finishing of the watch are fantastic. You do have a beautifully lively dial with plenty of things going on from guilloche to applied numerals to multiple layers and finishing techniques, which all just blend together really seamlessly and give a lot for the eye to focus on, a lot for you to just enjoy over time and over your ownership. There's a lot of cool finish and details on this watch, whether it be the coin edge bezel or the really cool rotor finishing, uh, just kind of like the movement in general and the way the movement is finished. This is just a pretty nice watch and there's a lot of cool details about it. As a final pro, I just think it's cool that they're doing something off the beaten path. It's not a copy and paste design you see everywhere else. It is a dress watch, which is probably one of the least popular categories, especially in this price range. And it's just fun. I'm glad to see new blood in the watch industry in a sense. Now moving on to cons, and while I don't have many, I do think they are important. Uh, I do think one of the cons for me is the case. I do think it needs a little bit more refinement, specifically in that lug area. I do think they can be a more defined shape or uh, there's just something about it which I think needs a little bit of zhuzhing up. This case shape also isn't too much different from the chronograph case shape you get in the three-ish, four hundred dollar version of this brand. So I do think there is, there needs to be a little bit more that justifies the price outside of the titanium and outside of the hollow lugs. And speaking on that point for a second, I don't put too much value personally on the titanium and the hollowed out lugs. I do think if the hollow out lugs added much cost to the watch at all, I would have foregone it. It is a cool detail, but I don't think it adds too much to the design. I don't notice it overly, and I do think it would have been more powerful as a tool in terms of design if there was some scalloping along the case side as well, or just something else. I do think it's almost just there for the sake of being there. And similarly with the titanium, if that's something that's boosting the price up too high, I would just make it in stainless steel. Titanium's cool, but when you're using grade two, it's more likely to stain, it's more likely to be uh, scratched than stainless steel is. It's cool, it's light, it's nice aesthetically because it's a little bit different, it's a little bit of a darker color, but it's not the end all be all. And if let's say it was $200 cheaper because it's steel, I would go that route. Kind of following on from those previous points, I do think the price is gonna be very subjective here. I honestly don't mind the price point. I would pay $13.50 for this watch and be happy with what I've got out of it. But with that being said, there are things about it which I don't love and I would love to see forgone if it makes it cheaper, namely that titanium, namely the hollow lugs. But there are cool aspects. Apparently this watch is fully made in the USA or fully assembled uh, from the movement to the case in the USA. If you place value on that, there's not really another watch in this price point doing that. So final thoughts, I do think there's a lot to love about this watch and it's undoubtedly well-designed, well-finished, and a lot of detail was paid here. I do think if you're focusing purely on dressier type watches, there's not a lot at this price point that really combats head to head with it. Sure, you can look a little bit lower at something like the Baltic, I think it's MR01 or whatever their micro rotor is called, and that has merit to it. It's a little smaller, it has a micro rotor, it's a little bit thinner as well. So there's a lot of cool about that, but having owned that watch, there is stuff about this one that's better. I do think the case is more interesting. I do think the dial is better done. I do just think uh, the movement arguably kind of looks better on this one, but I do like the architecture of the micro rotor. Dig digressing from that. There's a lot cool about this watch. Is there better deals out there? Absolutely. Is there better deals for dress watches? I'm not sure. What is this really coming head to head with. It's maybe spending a little bit more and getting a Nomos. It's maybe buying a Longines around this price point, but that's more of a sector dial maybe. Uh, there's not, I think, a lot of competition head to head. And if you do look at things in this exact price point, you're looking at more of sportier watches. So they fit a different purpose in my opinion. I do think this watch has a beautiful platform to build off of and a 2.0 version will be amazing. There's a lot they can improve upon and I hope they do. But anyway, let me know what you think about this little guy here. Let me know if you like it, if you don't, what you do like about it, what you don't like about it. And let me know if you pick one up. Love to hear comments down below. Thank you as always for watching the video. Hope you got something out of it and I'll see you in another one.